Burt Kreischer was on Burt Kreischer back is back on your mum's house and he had an interview with uh, Brian Simpson and um it was amazing. One of the best interviews ever, I swear to God. For all the wrong reasons, by the way. Not a good reason. But it was a funny interview because um Bert started the the interview with one of the weirdest ways I've ever seen. I've never seen an interviewer start an interview like this ever in my entire life. I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but this is a fascinating way to start an interview. Do you yeah. remember the first time you met me? <sighs> no. I do. Wait a minute. Well, no, you remember the first time you met me? Yes. Okay, yeah. Because I didn't like you. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> Have you ever had somebody ask you a question like that? Like even in in a conversation. Do you remember the first time I met you? You met me. Usually it's like, do you remember the first time we met? Do you know how we first, like, maybe it's a friend of yours I might do that, but no one's ever asked me the question in reverse. Do you remember the first time you met me? It's almost like, do you know who I am? Type of question. It kind of sounds like that. It kind of sounds a little bit, do you know who I am-ish? It's such a bizarre way to ask somebody a question, but it does encapsulate and represent who Bert actually is. He is a main character. He's always the star of the show. He's always the most important person in the room. He is he is the quintessential hero in his own movie. You know that motivational video that Rogan has when he's talking about being the hero in your own movie and slaying dragons and all this sort of nonsense and he's making grunting noises while he's lifting his kettlebells. Bert is the personification of that person. He is the hero of his own movie all the time in every scenario he always is the hero like everyone's like at the end oh Bert you're so silly and then everyone hugs him and shit oh Bert we're happy you're here that's what he that's what he probably plays in his mind he sees his mind always as that movie and he thinks uh, the the funny thing about Bert which I find is hilarious he thinks that in his brain but he also thinks you're thinking that in your brain he has that feeling like oh man they're probably thinking this about me they're probably thinking that about me they're probably thinking this about me they're probably thinking that about me it's like no they're not they're not thinking anything they're not thinking a single thing they don't even care it's fucking hilarious and i also like in this particular bit of the interview brian simpson from what they're saying brian simpson seems to be a little bit standoffish from what they're from how they're basically trying to describe brian simpson's personality he's not the most fawny type he's not the most lick arsey type he's just a chill dude kind of standoffish kind of chill keeps to himself i like that but in his mind because brian simpson wasn't trying to suck his dick because brian simpson wasn't trying to beg him to open for him or to go on tour for him or to get on his podcast in bert's head that means he doesn't like him because brian simpson wasn't trying to suck him off that's the way he sees friendships oh immediately when you meet him he's like oh my god that's bert and he's so happy that you said that because brian simpson is just like oh what's good and just shook his hand it wasn't enough so listen to how Bert dis- listen to how Bert describes the interaction and why he thought Brantis didn't like him. Well, no, because it's you, and you, I know now that I know you, I just know that you're not like this fucking sparkle razzle dazzle guy. You're like a <laughs> hi. <laughs> oh yeah, man. I get. I mean, look, I'm definitely, I'm probably new, you know, neurodivergent in some way that they had. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, you're not. Maybe you are, but no, you're not. You're just normal, Brian Simpson. You're normal. You're not trying to suck these guys off. You see them as human beings just like you. They're not anything special, especially behind the scenes. It's probably even worse when you see them actually working and you see them actually in private. You see them as regular people just like you. So there's no point of fawning. There's no point of fainting. There's no point of squealing, of going crazy, of like trying to pretend like they're the most amazing people. They're not. They happen to do the same job that you do. They happen to be in the same career field or the same area of fucking, you know, whatever entertainment that you're in that's basically about it you might make some friends you might not make some friends but there's nothing wrong with you because you didn't lick his ass i ain't gonna say autistic but like it's something my i I just my interactions be real uh clinical yeah yeah you know because i i I mind my business you know like the first time i met joe was that's the opposite of podcasters isn't it everyone doesn't mind their business everyone's always in each other's business myself included so that's probably why he comes across so weird because he doesn't, he minds his business, he keeps out of the way and he lets his comedy do the talking. That's very, very rare these days. I was with Tom, right? Remember the main room in the green room? Yeah. And they start, they got to talking and I put my headphones on. <laughs> cause I was like, oh, this, what they talking about ain't none of my business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Cause, because it was like, when it, cause like it's, it was secret time. You feel me? And I've done that before in my life. I don't know if you guys do that too. This is just what normal people do though, right? If you're in a room with people, and you're the one that's least familiar with everybody, and then they start having individual conversations, what do you do? 
just go on your phone, right? Or make excuses to leave the room. But I think in this entertainment world, these freaks probably try and get involved. That's why he's saying that, because he sounds like a, he sounds like a weirdo compared to these guys, but he's not. Because a regular person, if you're in a room with people that you don't know, and they all start having their little group conversations, just make an excuse and leave the room, or just leave the room anyway. Get on your phone, wait, just whatever, until they get you back involved in the conversation. But it's none of your business because they're clearly having a private conversation. But in that world, I bet you what you're meant to do is like, oh my god, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> you're meant to try and like, um, you meant to try and crowbar your way in and suck these guys off so you can hear them complaining about Matt Reif selling out the fucking MSG or something. Like, your conversation ain't that important anyway. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, if whatever they talking about get out, I don't want them to be like, you know what, that little nigga sitting over there. <laughs> so I just put my headphones on. Dude, but, I love the way your mind works. Yeah, but that. to other people, that looks like rude, right? Where like, I get it. Yeah, why, yeah. Would you, why are you sitting here with your headphones on like some kind of weirdo? Because you like, never think of someone's perspective being like that. Right. But I'm yeah, just but like, you also, the way you socialize, see, I relate to the way you socialize a lot. Yeah, that's what you by the way, keep an eye, keep an eye on the amount of drinks that Bert has in front of him. Just keep an eye on the amount of drinks Bert has in front of him compared to everybody else. Keep an eye on that also. Because you're so fucking similar, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it, it, bro, honestly, so often Tom, Tom and I will have the same exact angle on something. Yeah, really. That we've never spoken about. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nuts. Yeah, but the first time I saw him, I, I was like, yeah, he was one of the people that I, I was like, this guy's really funny. And I told people right away. I was like, you got to see this guy. Yeah, I, I heard you on that Two Bears. I was in, no, no. I was in L.A. I was in L.A. at the time. It was during, right around the pandemic, I think. It was, yeah, it was a few years ago. For and sure. uh, and he, <laughs> you had never heard of me. I think someone made this point before. I think my being Kino Casino guys made this point about Mersh. But I've started to notice it now, like, how many stimulants do you need, really, these guys? How many stimulants do you need? You got beer, there's a coffee there, there's some sort of thing that he's opening in a, in a sachet. I don't know if that's a Kratom thing, if that's some sort of, I don't know, whatever, something, THC. Like, how many stimulants do these motherfuckers need? Plus whatever Xanax he's on, Adderall, it's like... It's a non-stop shit. They're always on stuff. And the weird thing about it is, I'm not even complaining about that because I'm a bit of a fuckhead myself, right? But it's not even like they're funnier for it. Usually, if you're on all that sort of stuff, if you're on all that gear, if you're that juiced up, if you're that amped up, you should be at least be funny. At least let it influence your fucking content. At least have the LOLs on fucking deck. Make me cry laughing because you're such a fucking nutcase. At least. But no, you just get boring stories. You get Bert talking about being being drunk and his girls and hanging out this and this and that and you know fantasizing about his wife dying whatever like, you get nothing all these stimulants and you just get these boring middle-aged men talking about boring middle-aged things <laughs> you met me you never heard of me and then you did two bears and i was like he still never heard of me and then <laughs> and then he never and then throughout the whole thing he brought me up once and he just went past he was like yeah whatever <laughs> and then i tried to become friends again and i was like hey does brian have a big head because i have size eight head i have a lot of hats i can give him and you just were like i don't think he'd be interested <laughs> imagine how pathetic you have to be and this isn't even like Bert is trying to like suck up to brian he just wants him to kiss his ass i've never seen that before it's not even like he needs brian simpson for anything he doesn't need him for anything he doesn't need him for anything he just wants brian simpson to kiss his ass he just wants him to realize how important he is to have as a friend he wants him to be like stoked to see him like oh my god it's bert how are you he wants that reaction from him so he's trying to get him to give a fuck like please please even though he's way more famous way richer has way more experience been around longer he's just trying to like <laughs> fucking bizarre bro and i was like how fucking hard do i gotta try to get these guy to fuck with me <laughs> no 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 well, this I, is poor nah, i'll fuck with you bert you know what i'm saying i'll always be grateful for both of y'all because by the way when, when a black guy says that they don't mean it but especially the way that he said it he tolerates bert but he doesn't mean it and i'll play you a clip later but I think he got freaked out by Bert. I don't show about you, but it's not even a black thing. It's it's everybody thing. We all have our threshold of like craziness we can handle. I have my threshold, right? I always talk about how much I like psychos and crazy people. I don't really. I like them to a certain limit. And I think Brian Simpson witnessed something. He saw Bert in a scenario and he's never been able to unsee that anymore. That's why he probably keeps his distance. 
and but Bert doesn't realize it because he's a fucking weirdo or he's a narcissist. But Brian Simpson's definitely kind of written off Bert in a way, a little bit, tiny bit, from what I can observe. Because uh, you know, especially well, you Tom and Christina, because you know. Tom, Tom and Christina went out of their way to help me when like, no, there was nothing, you know, they got nothing out of it, you know? It's the best time to help somebody. I, I know, but it was like, that doesn't happen often, uh, or it wasn't happening often at the time, you know? So they just helped me for no reason other than I was funny. It's, it's weird, because like, okay, I, there's people I've helped in their career that have said to me, hey, thank you very much. But then sometimes like- It's not enough. Do you ever feel like it's still not enough? <laughs> We go like, I kind of need you to say that. Imagine, imagine thinking that. Imagine helping somebody out with something and then feeling like they haven't done, they haven't done enough. They haven't said it enough to you. They haven't made it, they haven't made you aware enough that you helped them so much. Imagine, imagine thinking that. Imagine being like that. Imagine being that person. Just imagine for a moment being that person that thinks that way. Can you imagine how insane that is? <laughs> that a little more often. <laughs> I was totally thinking the opposite no. when you said that. Because this is like, Bert has set, oh my God, it's such an interesting uh, peek into someone's psyche. First of yeah. all, he's like, you start from the beginning, he goes, do you remember when you met me? <laughs> yeah. and, uh, most people don't say that. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> he's like, what are your memories of meeting me? <laughs> and then... <laughs> Hey, yo, big up. What's in case you walk on, walk on, walk on. He'll probably put him on his next tour just so Brian will be indebted to him. Exactly. You see, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. I thank God somebody's able to synthesize and say it in far less words than I've been using. You know exactly what I'm talking about. It's that weird. <sighs> How do you describe it? It's almost like a. It's almost like he's purposely making himself way more important. Like I don't even. I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like he's making himself way more important to Brian Simpson than what he actually is. He's almost placing himself in front of him. Like, nah, you're gonna have to fucking like me. You're gonna have to be my fucking friend. You're gonna have to. I'm gonna. You know what I mean? And then I'm gonna put you in a position where you can't. Because maybe a part of him also. I'm thinking about this just like thinking aloud. Maybe a part of him also thinks. Brian wouldn't like him anyway. They're very different as people, maybe different comedians, different worldviews, different experiences and shit. So he's almost trying to like, he's doing that thing that Brendan used to do, where Brendan would like purposely go out of his way to be really nice to like some some random person so that that random person could be like, oh my God, like that guy's really nice. And then that guy would always have your corner. It's almost like a weird social, it's almost like a, a weird way to like bribe somebody you know like it's almost like emotional bribing reputational bribing if that makes sense it's so weird it's so bizarre big up boston crazy <laughs> then he's like i tried to get you to like me i don't like that i didn't feel it right away <laughs> and now he's talking about essentially being like a charitable person being like yeah i need a little more fucking feedback no you know what it, you know what it is though it's like you have to remember that most shit ain't really about you that's very like true. When you make, because it, it, you can you can have a lot of animosity when you make. Sh anyway, you get the point of that whole shit. Um, Brian Simpson came across really cool in that clip, but I just find it hilarious how Bert legitimately is kind of annoyed that Brian Simpson doesn't lick his ass as much as he probably would want him to lick his ass. I find that just fascinating to fucking witness. Like he's legitimately a little bit annoyed that Brian Simpson doesn't really like go out of his way to fucking love him as much as he probably should. Anyway, talking about that. What do you guys think about this? Am I am I bugging or did I find Burt Kreischer's doppelganger? Randomly searching online for new anime to watch and shit. And I stumbled upon this one creator's videos and I was watching him. I was like, hold on. He looks like somebody that I recognize. Do you like anime? I like anime so much. I'm about to talk about it for fun. It's way too early in the video to say the F word without getting demonetized. Stop. Well, if you're new here, this is Kaiser's TV 23 of 23, where I go over 23 TV shows from 2023. Doesn't that guy look like Burt Kreischer? Or am I bugging? Doesn't he look like him? Isn't that like anime Burt Kreischer? Isn't that geek Burt Kreischer? Isn't that nerd Kreischer? <laughs> Isn't that him? I swear to God that looks like Burt. That's like a spitting image of him. <laughs> that is literally Burt Kreischer. 
Holy shit. And if you weren't paying attention to the title or the beginning of this video, this time it's anime. And I am psyched because not only do we have 10 full segments, we also have 11 honorable mentions. So strap in for the final list and please try not to get too mad down in the comments. They're just cartoons. He's like, he's like the good version of Bert, isn't it? He's such a positive, nice guy. He seems cool. He seems fun. I love, I love nerds. I love geeks because, you know, I'm into the same stuff that they're into. So we've got a little kinship there. You know, niggas, we love our anime. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm no different. So it's good to watch these videos. But I was watching him, I was like, shit, that's fucking Bert Kreischer. That is literally anime Bert Kreischer. That is literally geek Bert Kreischer. That is literally hentai Bert Kreischer. Huh? That is it. That is literally waifu Burt Kreischer. That is basically Elden Ring Burt Kreischer. <laughs> that is literally Baldur's Gate Burt Kreischer. Fuck, man. It's fine. I was like, shit. What are I going for a nerd Burt Kreischer there? What are I going for a nerd Burt Kreischer? I love you. I love you. I love him. I love him. Anyway, moving on from that one. Burt made a really interesting point about his drinking and being generally surprised that his friends thought he was going to die. Now, my analysis of this clip is this before I play it. I have a feeling but kind of enjoys the way people think he's going to die, that attention he gets from that. Maybe I'm not saying anything crazy and I'm not saying anything mind-blowing, but I think I get the feeling that Bert is almost a type of person that enjoys any type of attention. So if the attention you're giving him is that, oh my God, you're concerned he might die, he loves it. If the attention you're giving him is that, oh my God, your comedy is amazing, he loves it. He doesn't care what attention you give him or for what reasons he fucking loves it so in this particular clip he tries to ask tom you know hey did you really think i was gonna die and obviously tom says yeah and instead of taking it as like a oh shit a warning like from your friend or like a wake-up call he just kind of you know laughs over it but i thought it was a really interesting little interaction between these guys because it kind of shows that bert's not really all there in the head he's a little bit you know out you know out for lunch as they say little bit out for lunch. How close did you guys think? Did you really, were you worried I was going to die for real? I thought it's definitely reasonable to think about. For real? Oh, well, that you would get into some, like if somebody had been like, Bert died, I wouldn't be like, you got to be fucking kidding me. That's, Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild, isn't it? That's wild. Imagine your friend saying this to you and you not thinking, oh shit, maybe I should wake up. It's like, it's almost like, you know, when you go for drinks with your friends and then they tell you the next day, oh mate, you need to relax. You're going a bit crazy. Regular people, you'll feel like a fucking addict. You'll feel like, you'll feel horrible about yourself. You'll be like, oh my God, I have to change everything about me. You go on like a two week fucking clean, a, a two week journey of sobriety and think you did a year. You'll be doing fucking push ups every day. Do you know what I mean? You're going to be on it. But for some reason, Bert doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to affect Bert like it affects us regular people. It doesn't seem to like, you know, doesn't seem to concern him that his friends are concerned about his long term health. So, oh, okay, really? Hmm. And by the way, look at the drinks. I love the fact that he's the only one with loads of empty drinks in front of him. Somehow, the podcast has just started. He's already ran through three beers, one more in the probably cup, and a whole mug of coffee there. Fucking hell. Yeah. It wasn't that bad, was I? Well, I th I just thought, because my first time actually like partying with you was that fully loaded tour. By the way, am I, am I off for saying this? But I think this is the point of that, whatever Brian is about to describe, this was the point when he started to like distance himself from Bert because he saw Bert in his like full form, at full force. And I was just like, I can't, like I couldn't believe how much you could party and still and not be dying. Yeah. yeah. Cause, and, I, and I'll, ne I'll, never, I'll never forget this moment where we're, we're, on your, we're on the bus and I'm like, I'm like, um, is it any water in here? And it was, it was just beer. Yeah. Like it was like 500 beers on this bus, and, no and not water. a single fucking bottle of water. And and I was like, what's the closest thing to water? And it was like, it was a grapefruit thing. Yeah. And I was like, I can't have grapefruit. And Bert <laughs> went, Oh, are you on this medication? And I was like, Holy shit! Like we like we on the same medication. I gotta fucking make a change. Yeah. And Bert doesn't see that for what it is. It's a funny joke, fair enough. But if you scratch the surface, if you scratch a little bit of the surface you'll see a bit of a real message there of like, I went out with you once and I thought I could drink, but you scared me. It's almost like the Boogie thing. Remember Boogie 2988? In the Boogie 2988 documentary, they interview some like 
they interview some prostitutes and shit and some cam girls or whatever the girls were that boogie likes to hire and i think one in particular said because of boogie she quit the business one of those girls cam girls wherever they are the ones that you call up for company wherever they are right however you describe those girls or the, the girlfriend experience in that boogie documentary one of them said she quit the business because of boogie and how disgusting he was having to like pretend to like be affectionate with this like fat 500 plus behemoth and slob and monstrous guy right having to basically do any sort of like sexual things with him it completely turned them off from the business so much so that they quit so usually those type of things should be a wake-up call for you if you're like and again boogie's not wake-up call he's still the same guy but if, if you're Bert and you go out with your colleagues your work friends and they all say oof you go crazy bro i thought i could drink but you go crazy for any sane person they'll be like oh i might have to like pull the bricks on this isn't it and like slow down a bit in Bert's head it doesn't even register it doesn't even register pure pure addict shit love it let him crash out it's gonna be fun to watch you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah yeah it was that serious it's, it's how hard he can push it but yeah you got you got pretty bad dude you got pretty i'm not disciplined i'm not disciplined enough dude. to what well, name a comic that if you found out they were dead you wouldn't be surprised like ralphie was that guy for a long time <sighs> if i found out they was dead you'd be surprised and then name a comic that if you found out they were dead you'd be like no fucking way well, if I find out Joe died, I would be shocked. I would be like, sh like from a health thing. Yeah, no, it's not gonna be a health thing. Yeah, people always say that, but as you know, touch wood, no one dies anytime soon. But Joe's also on a lot of stuff: hormone replacement, steroids, this, that. Like he does a lot of shit. Like Joe's morning routine, he must be like those bodybuilders, where they have those like massive pill boxes of like supplements and shit that they take. Joe's like, he's serious, bro. He, he's almost like a person, he's almost like a cancer patient. You know what I mean? Like taking bare pills. Like he takes quite a lot of medication. So yes, he's fit. Yes, he's fairly jacked and ripped for an old dude. But he's also on a lot of gear. That stuff doesn't end well usually. So as, un as surprising as it would be if he did croak over, cool. It wouldn't be that surprising really. He's on a lot of shit. A lot of shit. Um, but somebody that's like super... Um, Cause this is the era of the healthy comic. Yeah, yeah, it is the but era of the healthy comic. Who's a severe comic. fucking got a severe prop? I like how they're all afraid of, to say Bert anyway because he's sitting right in front of them. But Bert definitely has to be number one. No one will be surprised if he croaks. But again, like I said plenty of times, I think he's going to be the one to outlive all his comedic peers. That's how unfair and cruel the world is. Someone like him that takes absolutely zero care in their health is going to be the one that outlives everybody. Like nobody that I care about. <laughs> Not that I could think of off the top of my head where I'm like, because they usually, I usually stop fucking with those people. Like once you show yeah. me that you, because you can, you can drink, you can have a drinking problem, you can have a cocaine problem, you have a, but when you can't lock in when it's when it's showtime, yeah, I can't fuck with you because you, 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 you gonna pull me away from, yeah, because yeah. I'm always afraid that it's gonna all go away. Everyone is. I'm not at that point where I'm comfortable. You know. You see how we kind of was speaking to Bert a little bit there, kind of, because the suggestion is from these comedians, the suggestion is. That Bert does drink as because I I think originally I I was saying before in the previous streams that I thought this whole drinking thing that Bert does is like a bit of a I won't say it's fake but it's a bit over exaggerated, but from what these comedians talk about, even guys like Mark Norman who like to like drink and party and have a good time, allegedly like Bert's like real with it like he's real like whatever he says he does he does more, so allegedly according to these comedians he's also a freak in that he can get really fucked up he doesn't really sound or look it and he can get on stage and still crush allegedly that's what they say i don't know if i believe that because i think they're probably all fucked up and high anyway in the clubs they don't really remember well i think if you actually ask the fans to go and watch him i think they'd have a different you know interpretation of what they saw on stage but if that's the case and he is a guy that does he can drink and still perform that also doesn't last forever so there will come a point where he'll stop performing, where he'll stop being able to lock in. So I think Brian Simpson kind of saw that and kind of backed away, which is why he's more of a Tom guy than a Burt guy. Obviously, Tom is the one that kind of put him on and gave him shows and maybe got him in touch with Rogan and shit, cool. But Brian's more of a Tom guy because Burt is way more destructive and clearly a little bit scary to hang out with in real life. And so I don't want to be around people that don't give a fuck because yeah. they're they going to have you in situations where you don't, you don't give a fuck. Yeah. So, I, you know. All the people, there's a lot of people that I would Tony Hinchcliffe, if he got he died in like a gay murder pack suicide, <laughs> I'd be like, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. tracks. <laughs> right. tracks. No, you know, uh, Red Band, I, if, Red, if Red Band died, 
Red Band was the one that was like the canary in the mine. When he looks at me, he goes, oh, you don't look as bad as Reddit says. And I was like, what? And he goes, they say you're going to die. Yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? And he goes, you don't read Reddit? And I was like, I don't read anything, Red Band. That's a lie, by the way. But definitely reads his Reddit. He definitely reads his comments. And he definitely likes the fact that people speculate when he's going to die because it's attention. And he likes all forms of attention. And, and he was like, oh, everyone says you're going to die. But you don't look that bad. And I was like, wow. I was like, okay. <laughs> you're the only one in here that says I don't look bad. I was like, Brian, maybe both of us need rehab. Yeah. Which is true because Brian, you know, Red Band does look like he slips in, sleeps in an ashtray. But I think that's just his look. He just has that, you know, look where he's almost, always looks like he's just oh, permanently hung over. I don't think he's always as fucked up as he looks, but he, I could be wrong. Oh, what, about the, what about the big dude from Are You Garbage? Foley. Uh, I don't know him that well, but he's yeah. huge. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I, he's going down. It's he's just, losing yeah, weight. He's, he's losing doing weight. the 5K. Dude, everyone's everyone's losing weight. Bro, Jelly Roll's losing weight. Jelly Roll's down yeah. 75 pounds. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Everyone, you know, I think health is the is sexy. I think if like if you look yeah. healthy and you show health to someone, it looks fucking awesome. And you and the, and the thing is, if Joe fuck with you, you can't be around him without him saying something about it. Oh. At yeah. some point he's gonna be like, hey bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that is the number one thing I think that would drive Joe nuts about me was my lifestyle, my partying, and my like getting overweight. Cause he's like, he doesn't see you as that. He sees you as skinny. He sees you as your best version of yourself. No, he sees you as fat shit. He just hates fat people, for sure. He sees you as a fat cunt. Yeah. And he'd be like, I'd be like, yeah, I remember I remember one time I was, I was like, yeah, I'm working on losing weight. And he's like, what are you doing? I said, you know, Joe, I'm, I stopped ordering apps. And he was like, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> no more appetizers? Yeah, no more appetizers. And that's an insane defense in it. I stopped ordering appetizers. Is a fucking insane defense. I thought he meant I stopped ordering on fucking apps like Deliveroo and shit, but he meant appetizers. That's some real fat boy shit. I stopped ordering starters. I'm losing a bunch of weight now. What a fucking psycho. <laughs> and then last clip to play from the Burt and Brian Simpson um, episode is this one concerning... Bert being pissed off that his daughters are closer to his wife or to their mum than they are to him. He sounds pissed off, but he also almost sounds a little bit annoyed that they don't respect him enough the same way they do respect his mum, even though he's the one that basically, you know, brings in the bacon and pays for everything. It's an interesting outburst. Um, and I'd imagine if you're Leanne Kreischer, you're not going to receive this too well, you know? Maybe it's a bit, because I feel like... I feel like this whole episode was a bit of a bit anyway. I feel like they did it on purpose. Like they did that whole episode where like, oh, we're going to change things. We're not going to do the, all the things that you, you that annoy you. But I have a feeling, again, I haven't watched anything, but I have a feeling the views on the episodes after that weren't that great. So I think they've gone back to doing what annoys every peop everyone because at least people will watch like me. I will hate watch it and their fans will also hate watch it. So I think that's why they, that's why I think that's why Bert was so like, you know, oh, um, when's the last time? When did you guys remember when you met me? He was he all, automatically started doing all the things people hate about him. I think that's why. I think this is like a, a bit of a troll. I'm not too sure if you guys agree, but I think it was a bit of a troll. But I could be wrong. Or her boys. No, they they'd be better off. Like Leanne, like the, those. My daughters are Leanne's children. They're not my children. They're Leanne's children. Like I show up, but like I'm just another one of her kids. I'm I'm the equivalent to one of her dogs or a cat. Like right. I'm not I'm not. Well, it makes sense because it's like they get, it's like because they don't understand money yet. Yeah, they get ev they get everything from her. Yeah, right. They don't understand that it actually all comes from you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that she's useless. Yeah, in the entire fucking relationship. Like, Without me, they're nothing. It's like she hands. I love how they. This is almost one of the best things I love about stand up comedians, especially the, these main ones. How disparaging and how rudely and how dismissive and how you know just plain right out of order they are to their partners when they speak about them online now don't get me wrong maybe it's all part of a bit comedy thing whatever it may be but i love how bert doesn't recognize that raising the children which leanne crasher probably did on her own for the most part is a pretty essential part of like running a household right making sure the house is just clean and tidy make sure everyone's fed make sure everyone's bathed and shit all these things that he probably had no part in doing because he was on the road doing shows you know, drinking with fans after the shows and shit, just, you know, living his bachelor life or living this, like, you know, weird quasi-adult frat boy life thing. I love how he doesn't recognize or respect what Leanne Kreischer does for the household. What he does for the money, 
what he does bringing in the money is way more important than what she does when really they're both equal that's what a strong household is right one person makes the bacon and that person looks after it or maybe both of you contribute to the household income but you're meant to be 50 50 but for some reason Bert thinks he should be given what more praise for making money and shit interesting interesting outburst ends it to you but i bought it yeah they are absolutely fucking nothing they are <laughs> they are they are fucking if when 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 no kirk, no, kirk cobain died <laughs> jesus christ that's how you know he's angry that sort of stutter that sort of rage and inability to pronounce kurt which is not that you know dissimilar from burt it's in the same sort of category. You, if, you, if your name is Bert, you should be able to pronounce Kurt. Not being able to pronounce Kurt Cobain properly without stuttering four times is probably proof that you're really angry about what you're talking about. You mean this shit. I'm Kurt Cobain in that family. <laughs> Look, she can go start another band. Start the Foo Fighters. Have fun. Marry another man. But you have to marry another man. You, if you, or your band can't exist. Oh. I'm fucking Kurt Cobain. But, but, but here's the truth. The, the money comes from you, but she knows what to get. She knows oh, what yeah. to buy, right? Oh, I don't, I, I don't even, I really honestly don't even know how much money we have and I don't know what we can afford or why we buy certain things. And I just go, can we afford that? She was like, yeah. And I go, okay, then you can do it. Because I don't know. I have no fucking clue. See. And probably, this is the thing I don't understand about him because I get the feeling Leanne Crasher seems like a nice person. She comes across really nice on pods and shit. But I also get the feeling like she's very hands off with Bert in his life. I get the feeling. I could be wrong, but I get the feeling. Almost to the point of enabling. Almost to the point of enabling. That isn't enough. She probably doesn't really blow up his line when he goes on tour. She probably just trusts him and lets him do what he wants to do. He can go and get fucked up. He can go and get smashed. He can go and get drunk. He can be on tour for like 300 days out of the year. And I don't think she's the type of wife to like nag or to annoy. She's just one of the type of people like, hey, make sure the money's wired in at the end of the month so I can buy certain things and whatever it may be you know check in with me from time to time but she's probably not that naggy she just lets him be Bert because she knows if you let Bert be Bert you're going to be a millionaire you're going to be able to drive two cars you're going to be able to have you know you're going to be able to fucking drink Chardonnay in the garden with your fucking neighbor at 2 p.m on a Tuesday he can he can help you do that so she leaves him alone lets him do what he wants which is a dream for most men right your wife just like leaving you to do what you want to do and he's still not enough he still wants he not only wants Brian Simpson to kiss his ass he also wants his kids and his wife to kiss his ass. <laughs> because what? He makes money. It's like, bro, you're hardly here, man. Like, it's not, like, shut up. <laughs> I know I know for a fact that he's the opposite. Uh, of because, course. Because I know you think, like, Tom is like, you know, no, I need, to, I need to know where every motherfucker penny at. No? That's why he has more money than I do. <laughs> is he, with that, and he lives in it. He's a tax. I love how, I love how, I don't know if you noticed this, by the way. I love this. I love how... Tom rarely, rarely, rarely nowadays speaks about money or material things. That whole like crash out on the airport staff, the whole like ranting at the fans for complaining about his dispensive habits and shit and telling him to figure it out. It's finally got to him, innit? He doesn't even bite. When someone mentions stuff about money, cars, plane, he doesn't talk as much as he's used to in the past. He's proper like mute on it. He doesn't ever do anything now. He's like the fans got to him. It finally got through to him that the fans don't like him talking about all that lavish shit. Me personally, I have an opposing view. I don't think there's any problem with it. I don't think there's any problem with comedians talking about baller shit. Just be funny. Unfortunately, Tom isn't as funny as he once was before talking about baller shit. That's the main issue. Isn't that he talks about having a Ferrari or going on a race day or getting a private jet to, to fucking you know, San Francisco to do a gig or something. No one's worried about that. It's can you make it funny? He hasn't been able to make it funny in recent years. That's a major concern. Vader and he moved to this city. <laughs> but, but no, I know. I, mean, I don't even know how much money I have, but I know Tom has more. And I more. don't pay a manager. And I don't, you don't pay a manager? Right. Oh, fuck. Who would have a manager as a stand-up comedian anyway? Why do you, why do you need a manager? You do stand-up and maybe you might do some shows for networks and stuff here and there. But your main occupation is podcasting and stand-up. Why, why do you need a manager for that? At most, you might need an accountant, a financial advisor, and maybe a booking agent or something along those kind of lines. But why do you need a manager if all you do is podcasting and stand-up? You're just giving away money for money's sake. Unless the manager also doubles up as a booking agent. But you probably would need a booking agent more than you need a manager such a weird thing to kind of expense on but i guess in these circles 
having a manager is almost a bit like a its own cachet. Oh, I've got a manager. That means you're a big deal, right? Maybe that's part of it, but why would you just give away money? Like you don't need one, I don't think. And oh, it's damn. like he's smart with his fucking money, and that came from him and his dad. No, you know what I realized? I always thought I was bad with money. No comment again, by the way, about him and his dad. His dad was super rich, by the way, R.I.P. Top Boy. Um, sorry, um, Top Dog. Um, I love it. He doesn't buy it anymore. Tom does not talk about money or anything anymore. He's really, he's gone. He's been burned. The fans won. And then I, and I realized recently, I just didn't have enough money. Yeah, that's a, that's a like, real. I'm, oh, that's I'm, fucking I'm, fascinating. I'm still just as bad with money, but like, I, but I can afford to be as, I can afford to be as bad as, with money as I am now. How much money do you think? How much money do you think is like, if you signed a deal for dot dot dot, you'd be like, I'm fucking good for the rest of my life. Probably, Netflix probably, calls probably, up probably forty million. Forty. Forty fucking million. 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 Like, well, I'm like, well, I don't never got to do another fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah, about forty million. It's also fascinating that these guys talk about this shit on pods in it. It's a comedy podcast, so you just like pontificating about money. How much? It's almost like it's never enough for them. It's never enough that they get to play adult make believe. That they get to, you know, exist in a state of arrested development. They get to play this like silly goose thing into their middle ages, you know, performing on stage, telling jokes, having a good time. That's still not enough. You're still looking for that extra. Like, how much more do you need, bro? You've got a network, you've got a podcast, you've got a nice house, you do, you do Netflix stuff. Like, why are you thinking about how much, like, or, or, is, or are they think, or are they worried that everything's going to come to an end and they're looking for like one final payday? I don't know. I just find it odd that they're speaking about this in the first place. Anyway, it's just like, why is it mad? Really? Anyway, it's not really funny. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, because not- you know, it was for me when I was when I was twenty six years old. I thought if I could make a million dollars, I would be good. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, no, I, was like, I know. I was like, that it's, would, it's that's yeah. not enough. Everything changes because you, you know you know what it is. You don't what you don't calculate is. By the way, I find this also fascinating. Brian Simpson is about to say something that every regular person that hasn't grown up rich would say. If you haven't been growing up rich, every regular person would say this, but listen to how they react when he says what he says. Because it's different if you and a family are rich people, right? But yeah. if you the breadwinner, you know, especially if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if, you got a, if you have a single mom, mm-hmm. that's another kid. That's another kid. Yep, you got kids to take care of, you got a single mother, you gotta take care of motherfucker. Because that's the first thing I had to do is buy mom a house, I probably pay off my siblings' houses, I probably pay off their ex-wives' houses, God, that's such a black thing to do. That's not a black thing to do. I would disagree. P- get, getting your mama house isn't a black thing to do. It's the thing that everyone else does that doesn't have money from their family. Every regular person that doesn't have that, usually for the most part, your parents don't even own their own home. So when you're the first person or the only person in your family to start making some good money, why wouldn't you pay for your parents' house so that they have a home that they don't need to move out of? So they can be secure in knowledge that they own their home now because you're the one person in the entire family that figured it out, that was able to make some good money. Why shouldn't you give it back? Why shouldn't you, you know, reach back and help out the people who fucking brought you into this God's forsaken earth? It's almost fascinating because Bert's obviously lived always in the knowledge that his parents have always owned their homes or their, their home or their homes, plural. So he's never, ever had that eternal thing about, oh shit, man, now I've made it. I can put all my family on. Don't get me wrong. He's still looking after his wife. He's still looking after his kids. But I find that to be truly fascinating. He's never once figured, oh, shit, yeah. They don't need to buy my house because they, they own their own home. What, pay off ex-wives' houses? No, no, buy, like buy people houses. Like that's not a white thing no. at all. No, no, not at all. Because y'all already got houses y'all be inheriting. Probably. Yeah, I probably. Yeah, it's, it's different. Like it's, sure. it's, some you, it's some that I find very endearing, but I do not, I cannot connect with when... <laughs> I find it endearing, but I cannot connect with it. Yeah, because your parents own their home. It doesn't really, it's not that complicated, really, you know? Usually in a family, I don't know if this is scientific or if this is something that can be researched, but I'm sure it can. But usually in a family, how many people really get to make it anyway? Big up Austin Casey. As many faults as Rogan has, he yeah. hardly ever talks about his money or his possessions. Occasionally, he'll talk about one of his cars. I don't think it's interesting. Exactly. I don't think it's similar for personal life shit. I just don't think it's interesting. There's enough psychos. There's enough fucking freaks online, especially locals, for you to just be talking about them continually. You don't need to make your own life a bit of a fucking, you know, 
part of the entertainment, a part of the storyline. That's why some of the times I can't get into the... That's why sometimes it's so annoying how No Jumper is kind of devolved into this nonsense that it is now. Instead of them talking and commenting on the crazy shit that's happening in culture, they're just turning their lives into the storyline. It's like, fucking hell, man. Enough. And with Rogan especially, that guy's got all the money. He's the, he's the, he's the biggest. He is the biggest. He's made all the money. Yet he... Dove never speaks about it ever. It goes out of his way not to mention it. He rarely posts his. I don't even think he. I don't think he even posts his cars on social media. But then on the flip side, Brendan Schaub goes to buy him a green Ferrari when he gets fired from Showtime to prove to the haters that he's still winning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Rogan might have twenty five Ferraris. We'll never know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Unless someone on a podcast spills the beans, we'll never know. Or someone records him leaving the comedy store. We'll never fucking know. And yet these guys are sitting here. Again, two guys who come from, you know, families with decent money. I, I guess Tom might be, his dad probably is the one that made probably the most money. But two guys that come from decent amount of money pontificating about how much that, like, who cares, man? It's not funny. Move on. And they go, I, I bought my mom a house. So like, and I, and you didn't you, buy your mom a house? No. Was she, was she, but she already had a house. She had a house. Oh, she, had right, a house. Right. she had a house. Yeah, exactly. Like I grew up in a house. <laughs> exactly regular not a lot of people have that privilege it's a it's a privilege don't get me wrong it's an amazing thing to have no it's not wrong to grow up with money it's an amazing you know benefit it's an amazing um leg up it's an amazing chance why wouldn't you if your parents could put you through college without you having to incur debt that's fucking beneficial get the most out of it but i just love how these guys are so out of touch with like the regular world like oh what so like your parents don't own their own home it's like bro how many f don't you have any friends in your social group that just grew up normal or, or, or do all your friends dads happen to be part of the fucking local golf club like come on bro this isn't even i'm not even saying you have to grow up with friends that are from the fucking ghetto but don't you grow up with a one regular friend just one in four rogan secretly becomes the biggest land owner in the united states <laughs> yeah <laughs> that would be hilarious Rogan buys up all the buildings around the comedy mothership and turns it into like this or this um commune or something in it. They start growing their own vegetables. They start they have their own stores. They had a they have a flagship on it store there and shit. And then you know, case in point, he's got a fucking cult. Whoopsie. Big up for though. My mom yeah. ain't living in no apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, but it's like it's, it seems like a cultural thing to do. It's like take care of your parents, like set everyone up. No, it's just regular people do that. It's not cultural at all. Regular people do that. Like, yeah, uh, my, the white thing is like, oh fuck them, yeah. <laughs> they're really? fine. Yeah, no, I got pissed off when I found out I was the inheritance. When I found out I make yeah. more money than all them, and now all the fucking dreams I had of not working, they have about me and waiting for me to die. Right. That inheritance thing is funny because Tim Dillon mentioned it. And he's really raging. I never knew this was a thing. Beat really does look like a whole Kahlua pig. Roasted pink with crispy skin holding in all the fat. Just look at all his features. Yeah, exactly, yeah. He's fucking toast. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's a mess, bro. Just look at the drinks. Look at the drinks on the table. Big up Asada disease. Look at the drinks on the table. Look at the amount of drinks. I don't know about you, but when you're out drinking with your friends and shit, don't you sometimes get like drink shame if you start like getting a head start on them? Doesn't that exist with regular people? You start to get a little bit like self-conscious about how much you're drinking because you're on like your fourth and your friend might be only second. Not in Bert's head. Bert could be sitting down with you and just be cracking open mad bottles while you're still on your first. He's got three in front of him plus a co plus a coffee. <laughs> Wild dude. And the face has never been redder. Never been redder. The face has never been fucking redder. Absolutely fascinating. But the inheritance thing is fucking interesting. They made the an end point because Tim Dillon spoke about it recently. And I guess it's a, it's a weird American thing where like there's a certain sect of people who have this weird fantasy of like people and their family passing away so that they can inherit stuff. Like that's obviously a luxury because, you know, I don't, I, there's nothing I'm inheriting, absolutely zero. Maybe a fucking chair, right? Or a wardrobe. But there's this weird fantasy that people in the States have, some people anyway, I guess what Tim is talking about, about family members passing away so you can ha have stuff. It's like, but I love it in Bert's case because Bert was that person. Again, a person who's kind of born with a quasi silver spoon in their mouth, gets given all the opportunities in the world, starts to make money, is still fantasizing about an inheritance, and then you turn into the person that people are waiting for to die. <laughs> Life can be fucking cruel. Life can be fucking cruel. Big up Bartholomew's, big up Bartholomew's Kreischer.